J.M. Barry's Peter Pan. All children grow up. All except one. This is the story of the boy who never grew up. His name was Peter Pan. One night, three children called Wendy, John and Michael were fast asleep in their nursery. Their mother, Mrs. Darling, sat dozing by the nursery fire when suddenly the window blew open and in flew a little boy dressed in nothing but fallen leaves. With him came a strange bright light, no bigger than your fist, which darted about the room like a living thing. Mrs. Darling woke with a start, saw the boy, and screamed. <gasps> Just then, the door opened, and in rushed Nana, a big Newfoundland dog. She was so good with the children that Mrs. Darling had made her their nurse. Growling, Nana sprang at the boy. She was too late to catch him as he leapt lightly through the open window, but his shadow did not have time to get out. Slam went the window and snapped it off. Mrs. Darling examined the shadow curiously and then rolled it up and put it away in a drawer. The next evening, Mr. and Mrs. Darling were getting ready to go out to a party when Mr. Darling bumped into Nana. The proper place for that dog is in the yard, he said crossly as he brushed Nana's hairs off his trousers. Oh, George, said Mrs. Darling, you know Nana's a treasure. Besides... A strange little boy came to the nursery yesterday evening, and I fear that he will return. I won't feel happy unless Nana stays with the children. But Mr. Darling would not listen. He seized Nana by the collar and dragged her off to be chained up in the yard. Mrs. Darling comforted the children, sang them to sleep, and crept out of the room to go to the party. A moment later, a bright light began to flash about the room. Only when it came to rest could you see that it was not really a light, but a fairy, no longer than your hand, a fairy girl called Tinkerbell. She darted through all the drawers of the wardrobe and finally disappeared inside a jug. Then the same small boy who had so startled Mrs. Darling opened the window and stepped in. He had carried Tinkerbell part of the way, and his hand was still covered with fairy dust. Tinkerbell, he called softly. Where are you, Tink? Have you found my shadow? She made a tinkling noise like a little golden bell, and the boy ran to the chest of drawers. In an instant, he had scattered their contents onto the floor and snatched up his shadow. But how was he to put it on again? He tried sticking it on with soap, but it was no use. No matter how much soap he put on his feet and then on his shadow, they just would not stick. He sat on the floor, buried his face in his hands, and sobbed. <laughs> it was then that Wendy woke up. She sat up in bed and said, Why are you crying, little boy? He sprang to his feet bowed very politely and said, What's your name? Wendy Moira Angela Darling. What's yours? Peter Pan. Is that all? It's very short. Where do you live? Second to the right, then straight on till morning, said Peter. <laughs> what a funny address. I mean, is that what they put on your letters? Don't get any letters, he snapped. But your mother gets letters. Don't have a mother. Oh, Peter, no wonder you were crying, said Wendy, and got out of bed and ran to him. I wasn't crying about mothers. I was crying because I can't get my shadow to stick on. Besides, I wasn't crying. Fortunately, Wendy knew at once what to do. She got out a needle and thread and sewed the shadow onto Peter's foot. It held on beautifully. Peter was so delighted that he danced up and down the nursery, crowing with pleasure. Oh, the clever!
cleverness of me! He cried. You conceited thing! Exclaimed Wendy. Of course I did nothing. If I am no use, I can at least leave you alone. And she jumped back into bed and covered her head with the bedclothes. Oh, Wendy, please don't leave me alone! Pleaded Peter. I can't help crowing when I'm pleased with myself. But still, Wendy would not look up. One girl is more use than twenty boys, Wendy. Do you really think so, Peter? Said Wendy, and looked at him again. She even offered to give him a kiss, but Peter did not know what a kiss was, and held out his hand. And so as not to hurt his feelings, Wendy gave him a thimble. Now I shall give you a kiss," said Peter, and he presented her with an acorn button, which she fastened to a chain round her neck. Peter, how old are you?" asked Wendy. "I don't know, but quite young. I ran away the day I was born." When I heard father and mother talking about what I was to be when I grew up, but I don't want ever to be a man. I wanted always to be a little boy, so I ran away and lived a long time among the fairies. At that moment, they heard a sound like the tinkling of bells. <laughs> That's Tinker Bell. Said Peter with a smile. She says I've locked her in the drawer. Peter opened the drawer and out sprang Tinker Bell, screaming with fury. Oh, the lovely! Cried Wendy. But tell me, Peter, if you don't live with the fairies now, where do you live? I live in the Neverland with the lost boys. They're the children who fall out of their prams when the nurses are looking the other way, and I'm their captain. Sometimes I come to your nursery window to listen to your mother's lovely stories. I must go back now, for the boys will be anxious to hear the end of the story about Cinderella. Oh, don't go, Peter," entreated Wendy. "I'll tell you lots of stories. Why don't you come with me to the Neverland and tell the other boys?" You could tuck them in at night. None of us has ever been tucked in at night. Oh, Wendy, do come and be our mother. But how would I get to the Neverland? Well, I teach you to fly, of course," said Peter. "Would you teach John and Michael to fly too?" she asked eagerly. Well, "If you like." Wendy ran to her two brothers and shook them. Peter Pan has come, and he's going to teach us to fly. Can you really fly? Asked John and Michael together. They watched as Peter flew about the room, but when they jumped off their beds, they always went down instead of up. Of course, no one can fly unless the fairy dust has been blown on him. One of Peter's hands was covered with it, and he now blew some on each of the children. Just. Wiggle your shoulders and let go," he said. So they tried, and found that they could fly. At first, they flew from the bed to the floor, but then, as they grew braver, they found themselves circling round and round the room, their heads bobbing against the ceiling. "I say," said John, "why shouldn't we all go out?" This was just what Peter wanted to hear. Come, he cried, come and see the mermaids and pirates in the Neverland. Pirates! cried John, seizing his Sunday hat. Let's go at once. And still dressed in their night clothes, the children followed Peter Pan as he soared out into the starry night. A minute later, Mr. and Mrs. Darling rushed into the nursery with Nana at their heels. But it was too late. The birds had flown.